shines a light on the Great Y College Hunt Beagle Nap. Late on the evening of January 4th, 2001, the final staff member at Y College had checked on the Beagle's kennels and, presumably being satisfied with things, had gone home. At 8am the next morning, when Daniel Murphy, Huntmaster and college student, went to check on the Beagles, presumably to feed them, he found something was amiss, namely the Beagles. Overnight, ALF activists had broken into the kennels at Y College, home of the Y College hunt, and liberated their pack of hunting beagles. Y College reported that 46 dogs were taken. The ALF stated they had taken 55. Seems one of the two parties' math skills are somewhat subpar. In a similar display of lacklustre arithmetic, dual claims of all dogs being taken, as well as that of four dogs being left behind, did the rounds of the media in the aftermath of their liberation. Wendy Peckham, an Alliance spokeswoman, said, It is simply cruel to take the hounds from an environment where they have thrived and where they live and hunt together. The environment where they thrive being the kennels where they spend most of their life. There must now be serious doubts about their long-term welfare. An ALF spokesperson communicating covertly with the media said that the ALF was taking matters into its own hands because the government was dragging its feet over banning hunting. In a written statement, it said... All the dogs will be placed in safe, loving homes, as the government procrastinates on their pledge to ban hunting and hunt sabs continue to risk their lives to protect our wildlife. Needless to say, this was 2001. The hunting ban did not come into effect in Britain until early 2005. Four more years away, after what was already a lengthy wait after Tony Blair's election in 1997 and his promises to ban hunting. In a further example of irony that never seems to grow old or get worn out, other hunters expressed concerns about the animal's welfare, those soft-hearted old gents. The hunters threw as much muck as possible, little of it sticking, though the media was certainly on side, displaying a predictably biased and one-sided view of events. An early form of virtue signalling, still in its infancy being witnessed from all and sundry connected to the hunt, appearing to only have the dog's welfare in mind. Yet the fact remained that the dogs were little more than psychotic killers, unable to think about anything else, save pack life and tearing things apart. They, being beagles trained to hunt, simply do not make good pets, a veterinarian was quoted as saying afterwards. I wonder if he was a hunter himself. The hunters also stating, in a seemingly bizarre admission, that the hounds had only killed one hare the previous season. Despite pining over half a century of bloodline loss, and the fear-mongering over their ruthless propensity for violence, their proficiency in the heat of battle seems to have been grossly exaggerated. Either that, or the hunters were fishing for sympathy from Joe and Joanne Public, who largely despise hunters for all their posh toffery, and of course, the senseless killing. The meat they had planned later that day would go ahead regardless, the hunt claimed, despite having only four hounds taking part. Gotta admire that never-give-up attitude, don't you? It seems there were four dogs left after all. A month later, police acting from an anonymous tip-off, are there any non-anonymous tip-offs? Located Sexton, a seven-year-old, multiple-prize winning member of the pack. Police swooped on a Bristol residence and arrested Julian Greensides, who was charged with handling stolen goods. The media, true to form, running inflammatory headlines stating that Sexton was found castrated, like he had been cruelly butchered by some brainless imp in a backyard. I believe Sexton had in fact been dissexed by a qualified veterinarian, as well as having his identification tattoo scrubbed off under anaesthesia, though the media would have you believe the ALF did it with a cheese grater. The Y College hunt had challenged the ALF to prove that the dogs were alive, again asserting the ridiculous claim that they had reports that most of the dogs were now dead. Seems likely. Of course, this was an evidence fishing exercise, for which the ALF didn't buy it. The reaction to Sexton's de-sexing was simply the hunter's toys exiting the pram for the fact that he cannot sire any more puppies and his apparently champion lineage, only one hair last year remember, ending therewith. Greensides appeared before Maidenhead Crown Court, charged with burglary and possession. Greensides stated that he had found the dog wandering the streets and had taken him in as a stray and had not taken part in the raid to liberate him. Lacking any evidence to the contrary, Greensides was charged with handling stolen property and given 60 hours community service and ordered to pay £200 in court costs. 
The media, reporting on the trial afterwards, said that Greensides was an ALF sympathiser and also unemployed. Shine with blood.